Hi, this is Chuck Mills, and I'm in Glasgow, Scotland. about is it's it's a it's a it's a it's a much deeper uh, uh, sociological type of um, uh, reference to the project it's it's called the good robot but actually it's not about good at all it's about bad and how we are using we are kind of taking advantage and manipulating technology to use it in more darker ways than what they were originally uh, uh, created for, for instance, like the internet and swiping people's identities and credit card theft and uh, things like uh, reproductive science, where you know uh, a woman has 14 kids because she can, and 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 uh, and uh, or people changing the way that they look, and so we, we, all, all this is happening for the for supposedly the good, the good robot. But uh, actually, it's, it really measures the degree in which we uh, are really using, you know, the technology. And so, and also, and then also in the case of, say, like uh, our, our new president, Barack Obama, we judge him, or a lot of us in America judge him on his makeup, on his design. He was from a black uh, uh, African and a, a white American, and the mixture of the t two creates this very calm temperament where he's not too cool and not too hot he's somewhere in the middle and and so we're, we're, we're we've now become to look at the design of things before considering that maybe he he learned these things from other things in his life or, or, or other places in, in his life that perhaps maybe uh, his his makeup has very little to do with the, the, the person that he is now um, and so it, that it's also taking that in, into consideration as well. So again, we wish to have the good robot, but it questions whether we have the capacity to actually create one. I hope that it relays itself as somewhat of like an alarm, you know, that uh, an alarm clock that that is is really begging for people to look in that direction to kind of question whether what we're doing with technology for the most part, is the right thing. in this industry. Um, I mean, I've always known dance music for all of my adult life and, and a lot of my teen years. I mean, I was always dancing from the age of 14. So, um, and so you want to keep dance music, you want to keep electronic music in your life, but you also want to understand things and bring things to the subject of other people. And so by mixing these two things together, you know, it, you know, it, it just, I, I just find it more comfortable to, to always kind of use music as a reason to kind of bring certain ideas or certain topics up for discussion. And so 
Um, of course, yes, the music can be danceable. It can play a role, uh, the, the, the main role in programming it for people at a party. But it can also be about a topic that if you don't want to dance, you don't want to go out, you can, it would provoke you to think about something uh, that probably affects, you know, all of us in our everyday lives. We don't know, I'm not going to say any names of any, of any artists, but we don't know what they think about abortion. We don't know what they think about left versus right. We don't know about anything about any of, 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 of other DJs that I know. I, I don't know anything really about them. Um, when I read interviews, it's always from a certain perspective. Of course, most of the readers are music followers, but they are also people that wake up every morning, turn on the TV, drink their coffee, go to work or whatever. They do other things, you know, and, and I think that uh, it's, kind, it's kind of strange after all, all, all these years that there really never has really been any in-depth questioning about who these people really are, you know, uh, and how did they come to be where they are now and why are they choosing to do this as opposed to wear a tie and go to an office? What is so special about this music that keeps them uh, here to, you know, to do this? There is a starting point of where the discussion should actually be. Not, not about w what your hottest record w on Ibiza was. I mean, th th these, these things can be you know, seen in you know, very, very small side notes. But discussions about who the DJs are as people would give uh, all, all of us a better un understanding why and where we're actually headed. that, that uh, begs to go beyond the dance floor, beg that goes, beg to go beyond the strobe light. Sometimes we are very reluctant and want to keep it on the dance floor and keep it very simple and, and keep it. But in this world, you know, you know, with some people, sometimes it's, it's, very, it's, it's very difficult to kind of ignore what's, what's happening around you and, and not use the music to say something about it. And so um, do... If, if I ask, you know, if, if, if you ask me if I think that it's a, a shame that more musicians don't use the music to say things about what they believe, the answer is yes. I think that, that with all the producers in the world, we, we miss so many opportunities to play a role in informing people about very important things that uh, I think that it probably won't be from our generation. It'll probably be from, hopefully, some new producers many years down the line will learn how to use music to say things to people other than, you know, uh, things that are associated with just, just, just partying, to use it as communication. And, uh, and, and it, you, know, it's, you know, music is often used for that, but unfortunately not, not electronic so often. <laughs> 